The message you're about to listen to is brought to you by the Enthronement House Christian Center, a church with the mandate to activate and actualize God's royalty in you. Fasten your seatbelt, get ready for a ride as God's servant brings you the anointed word of God that will change your life forever. And now, the ministry of the senior pastor, Enthronement Assembly, Reverend Deji or Labode. Genesis 2 verse 5. Don't put men on a pedestal. Men are men. Amen. You don't know. And no man knows the things of a man save the spirit of that man. And I'm not the spirit of the man. So in this place, there's no chair today. All of us will learn, including me. <laughs> Let's read together. Before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. Look at verse 6 of that scripture. Because there was no man, God released a mist. A mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Second scripture now talk, Ezekiel 22 and verse 30 to verse 21. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. All right, so I sought for a man. Among them, who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy? But I found, God found no man. Look how happened. Therefore, because I couldn't find a man, I poured out my indignation on them. I consumed them with the fire of my wrath. And I have recompensed their deeds on their own head, says a lot of us. Tell somebody, Naman you be. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, help me in the short time that I have to make impact, to make sense. Let this word come home. Let the journey for true manhood begin for somebody here. Help me not to keep back from them what is profitable for them. Let real men arise from this service. Bert conviction in them. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Look at the man next. Say, Naman, you be. Look at another man around. Say, Naman, you be. Ask him, you sure? <laughs> you sure? All right, so this is men are powerful. Men are powerful. I dare say it is better to remain single than to marry the wrong man. Well, that's the truth. Men are powerful. For God to say something there, he said, before any plant grew on the field, on the earth, before any herb had grown, for the Lord had not caused it to rain, because there was no man. So because there was no man, where there was supposed to be rain, there was mist. That's very powerful. It means that if a man is not in the position he's supposed to be, instead of sending rain, God may be sending mist. As I prayed for you overnight, I saw several families in my spirit, and the Lord said I should tell you, what that family is enjoying is not rain yet. It's just mist. And that family is enjoying, is just having mist because the man is not in the position that he's supposed to be. When there is no man in a house, where there should be rain, God will now compare rain and mist. You know mist. Mist is that thing that when you wake up in the morning, dew. Now compare the impact of rain with the impact of mist. What I was saying there is that in the absence of right men, the right quality of men, no matter what I want to do, I have to scale it down. Are you there? So men can actually limit men can actually limit what God will release. 
And as I prayed prophetically, I saw many families in our church that what the families are enjoying is mere mist because the man of the house is not who he's supposed to be. He's not in the position. And the fact that a woman is where he's supposed to be does not automatically make things turn out right. Many of you came from families where the man was not what he was supposed to be. You know that that family, you know that even your mommy tried. You know, many of you know that your mom tried. But there's no substitute for the presence of a rightly functioning man in any space. My question to men these last days, men, are you there? Or are you not there? Are you there? Or are you not there? Is it possible that because you're not who you're supposed to be, that family is not where it's supposed to be? That home is not where it's supposed to be? A lot rise and falls on the quality of men that we have. And here I'm not trying to condemn you, but I just want to share on men and that sometimes in dealing with men, the challenge with with many men is that many men were raised by women and not men. Show me a man that a woman raised and show me a man that men raised. There's a difference. Show me a mommy's boy. <laughs> You know, in our church, for instance, now there are a lot of the men in our church, they gravitate towards my wife. <laughs> you know, mommy's boys. They are the worst ones, most of them. The mommy's boys. You know, mommies, you know, mommies. You know how mommies are. Mommy, about me, show Mommy, you are in the spirit. They prepare mommy. Mommy will take rubbish. Mommy will not see the gaps in your manhood. Even if she sees it, she will not have the courage to confront it. I like the way my wife beats her children sometimes. She's beating them. Iwo, Iwo, ah, I need to bring these children my way. Let me help you beat them. You know, sometimes, because women sometimes carry them in their womb, there's a way they can't. But me, I didn't see this womb, nothing did there, not food. <laughs> if I beat you, <laughs> you will know. Most of my children have had to beat just once in their life. But that beating, it is working to now. <laughs> now, mommy beats, see, see, their mommy beats them all. But they fear me more. <laughs> because <laughs> when I beat you, <laughs> your destiny will set. <laughs> Many grew in homes where there was no man like that. The man was not there. It was the woman. Pampered them. Had some feminine perspectives about things that should be confronted. The second reason also is that so some, the first challenge is men were raised, many men were raised by women. The second challenge, <laughs> challenge is that many men did not have models, right? There was no model. Even till now, there are many men that don't have any model because men by our very nature, we don't like anybody to tell us what to do. So men, by very, their very nature, have a way of running away from authority. Because every man likes to feel like he's in charge, even if he doesn't know what he's doing. Is that not so? It's a man thing. And that's why, sincerely, one of the supreme tests of manhood is submission. Because men, we, by, by, men by, see, submission to authority is more natural to women than men. Because men are very, go and find it. Men are very competitive. So they don't want any man, if you want your husband to like me, don't talk about me too much. 
Because no matter what you tell your wife about me, say Rev said in his mind, like, is it not my, my label? <laughs> you know, <laughs> take my message to your man, he will water it down. That's the way men are. As far as it's concerned, even he's my pastor, but he's another man. And if you gel for me too much, he won't like me. Some of you don't know that the problem in your family is the kind of reverence you are giving to me. No man, every man wants to feel like he's the one. And he's the only one. That's just the truth. So many men actually lack models. Nobody that can call them to order. Nobody can put them to shame. I call it the cause of laish. They are just on their own. Making decisions. There are men who, for instance, have wrecked their family. Took decisions where nobody... Some men, for instance, just carry themselves alone and travel, leave the family. I had a, 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 a dear woman here. The man just, without notice to pastor, parent, or anything, just relocated. Till as I'm speaking today, that family is not where, 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 where it's supposed to be. And then sometimes, it may be a generational issue of men not wanting to be account. How do you carry yourself and relocate to a nation based on your own idea alone? No counsel, no impute. That's how men are. So men, the second problem is that we lack models. And that's why one of, ahead of myself, one of the supreme uh, marks of a man you can be with is there must be somebody that calls his shot. I, for instance, now, see, I have people. I'm not better than you. I may just be more submitted than you. I mean, just be more submitted, and I mean genuine submission. People that, if they tell me it's like this, I, even if I don't think it's like that, I'll, I'll bow. And it has helped me. So many men lack, many men are facing challenges that are not really challenges. Not that they don't have any, any father figure or any elder brother figure close enough to them. Like, but this is it. When your dick is no longer rising for you, okay, oh, the women are here. When your dick is no longer rising for your wife, this is what you should do. This is how you should go. But there, there, many men don't have it. So, and because the way men are, let me explain this. Women also have communities where they used to support themselves. Men don't have it. You understand? Women are very supportive in their, women have communities. When you want to give birth now, they have community where they'll be clapping. I'm uh, not Well, They have communities. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a way that every, there's a womanhood has, you understand? There is no way where they train men on anything like that. We will be learning by ourselves. It's a, it's a man thing. The third reason why men have a huge absence of model, the third reason why men have a challenge is also every man does not like to be told they are not right. You know what I'm saying? They don't like it. All of us. So it's a huge challenge. So what I want to share with you briefly today is what, what are five or six attributes or what I say, uh, when I say, now man you'll be, that's my message, now man you'll be, that's my message really. Or oh, excellence in manhood, but now man you'll be. What are some things to make you uh, say this one, now man, is a real man. I'll share a few things with you. Of course, I've said number one, submission. Yeah, we like to feel like we know how to do it, but we, don't, we, we, we really don't know. So when you see a man that is authentically and genuinely submitted and does not undermine what they are submitted to when, we're, when they're with you, you, that's one thing you should look for. Now, having said that, a real man is not, ne not necessarily a perfect man. Now let me bust your bubble. Ladies, I know you have the illusion of a perfect gentleman. If your man is a perfect gentleman, lady, you don't know him. <laughs> Say, God has provided a perfect gentleman. You don't know him. <laughs> I know many of you ladies are looking for the perfect man. They don't exist, including me. 
Every man has issues, including me. So you don't have, it, the fact that someone's a real man doesn't mean they're a perfect man. It, a real man is not synonymous to a perfect man. And if your man is perfect, you are being perfectly deceived. If you are going to clap, clap very well. In fact, let me open up to you. Ladies, if your man is too perfect, be concerned. If your, if your man is too perfect, you are being perfectly deceived. If your man is too perfect, it basically means this one thing. Your man is not talking to you. Biola is not talking to you. Biola is not you. I just saw your face. So you just mentioned. <laughs> it's not that. That's why it's not good to sit there in front because we'll be mentioning you. If Biola is perfect, Biola, let me use you so that because you'll soon be going to church. Where is your wife? Stand up. If this man is perfect, you are being perfectly deceived. It means he's not talking to you. And if he's not talking to you, he's talking to somebody. And whoever your man is talking to owns him. So, what? If you want to clap, I didn't say you should clap. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down. Whoever is talking to owns him. <laughs> uh, mommy, am I making sense? It, it's not perfect. Whoever is talking to owns them. You see, you don't own a person you don't know. One of the challenges of official relationships are sometimes the more official a relationship is, the less personal it becomes. It's a marital challenge. This is my wife. This is the mother of my children. Official. So there are some things they can't... You are the mother of their children. Auntie, get out of that mother illusion and talk to me. Ladies, tell them, talk to me. Oh. Tell me as they do you. Oh, yeah, tell the guy that's there. Look at the man that's there. Tell me, tell me as they do you. Many of the men you are looking at, they're wearing suits. Eh? Eh? Some of them, not here, maybe not in this church. Many of the men you're looking at, they're wearing suits, look can't collect it. Eh? They have masturbated on the point of, of blisters. That is, you don't know them. And if you don't know them, you don't own them. So there are no perfect men. So you don't have to be a perfect man to be a real man. However, you may not be perfect. I'm not perfect, but you can be sincere. Are you there? You can be sincere. And ladies, if your man is not perfect, but your man is sincere, you can work with that. Ladies, am I talking to you? You can work with that. You can work with that. If you have a sincere man, see, if they put two men in front of you now, one is perfect, one is sincere. Go for the sincere one. You see, that one that is perfect, eh? you are being deceived. That one that is sincere, you at least know what you will deal with, at least reasonably. That one that is perfect, you don't know nada. The real thing will show up later. <laughs> so when I'm saying real men, I'm not saying perfect men. There are no perfect men. I'm not perfect. And a man doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, there are no perfect men except Jesus Christ. And even he was tempted in all points. Abby? It's just that he was without sin. So, do, so ladies, drop that perfect illusion. I remember I was counseling some time ago and I was talking to a couple. And I just hope they are not listening to me right now. Anyway, I didn't mention their name, so you won't know. Because the gossips are always looking for the person. The, those that are not gossips just won't need the lesson. I was counseling husband and wife and that was when I used to have time to counsel and I don't have that kind of time now. Counseling, then I said, for instance, now, if you masturbate or something like that, the guy thought I said, when last did you masturbate? He heard something else. The guy said, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that 
was not the big deal. I was saying, the guy said, it was yesterday. The real deal was the wife. The wife turned like, Ah, I say you are not ready for marriage. Which means in her wildest dream, she could not imagine that this man that she's about to marry to has masturbated in his life. And the guy said yesterday. Then I said, Auntie, calm down, calm down. I said, calm down, no. That's what you're about to enter. Marriage is dealing with reality. You are handling reality. And the more realistic your marriage is, the more successful it will be. I didn't say the, 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 the less idealistic. One reason why I have problem with a lot of relationship teachers where they talk online. Ah! If all this, you have problem. You know you have problem. Many of them are talking about ideal, ideal, ideal. Okay, listen to me. You are sitting down here. The ideal and the real, is it the same thing? And the problem is, these ladies that like all of those ideas, their brain is full of ideas. Full! Yet, the more realistic your marital relationship is, the more successful it is. The more idealistic, the less successful. Because you will be fighting all the time about the ideal. Eh, it's not like this. It's not like that. It's not like <laughs> You have crammed your head full with textbook approach to relationships. It's not that no matter what you read in the textbook, you will know. Architects will tell you, no matter how the plan is, when you get on ground, the realities will be different. You will need to now adjust yourself to the realities on ground. Because no matter your idealism, the reality on ground is the reality on ground. I have young people who are not going into details. When I do marriage, I'll go into details. <laughs> so, it's not perfection. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real men, sincere men. The first thing, a real man, a real man is courageous. Someone say courage. courage. Give me first Samuel 4, verse 6 to verse 10. Now, when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, King James, please, said, what does the sound of this shout, what, when the Philistines heard, read to me, the noise of the shout, they said, what means the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. Continue. The Philistines were afraid, for they said, God, mark that they were afraid. Then they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, woe to us. For there has not been such a thing here to fall. Next verse. Woe to us. Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Keep moving, please. Be strong and quit yourself like men. O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto this as has been to you. Quit yourself like men. And fight. When he said quit yourself like men, the word there means to be courageous in battle. To be courageous. Now, but notice that courage there, earlier he said they were afraid. So courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the capacity to act in spite of fear. To keep moving. So when they say, quit yourself like men. See, real men get afraid, but they don't show it. They are afraid, but they keep moving. They are afraid, but they keep fighting. Look at what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. Quickly, please. Watch ye. Read it. Stand fast in faith. Quit you. Like man, be strong. Quit. What he's saying there is that act courageously. Like men. Like men. There is nothing that 
you are facing that has not happened before. But men keep on moving. They are courageous. See, there's a church recently somewhere that now man be their pastor. I'll mention the church. Courageous. In the face of challenge. Courageous. It is really not what happens to us that us. it is our response to it. And nobody gets to the point of fear and is not afraid. But real men, in spite of the fear, still move. So when you see a man that is paralyzed by fear, no be man, he be. If you be man, eh? You do it afraid. Real men quit themselves. Incidentally, the act came, they quit themselves like men, and they still won the battle. They said, Why is us? No, sometimes you may never know what you will win if you don't confront it. Okay, nobody has ever survived this kind of challenge. You will survive it. Which man has not had challenges? It's just that while other people allow their challenges to be their bearing ground, some of us, our challenge is the ground for resurrection. And that's why when you have men, no matter what you face, when you talk to men, they still see a way through. They know that there's nothing coming from the heavens that the earth can't take. Okay, so somebody now is pregnant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are you not going to end your life because you impregnated somebody out of wedlock? Or are you going to see your way through? Do you want us to tell you what we have faced? You don't want to know. Have we failed? Yes. Have we made mistakes? Yes. Have we made errors? Yes. But we didn't quit. We keep fighting. This home can work. Has our hearts strayed from the one we are married to? Yes. Are we powerfully married? Yes. A man is courageous. A man will never allow the defeat be the last chapter of his life. No matter what it is. No matter the mistake. No matter the error. No matter the failure. Now, young women, you must be looking for people like that. Because you don't know what the future holds. You need a man that has the capacity to resurrect himself. No matter what is confronted. Okay, so he has death. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, you made a wrong business decision. Uh -huh. Who has not made a wrong business decision? Oh, you lost some money. Uh -huh. The thing about men is they are courageous. They are afraid, though, but they keep moving. They are confused, though, they keep moving. They fall, but they keep moving. He said a righteous man for seven times, but he keeps rising. He keeps rising. He keeps rising. Because he refuses to allow the fall be defined in the last chapter of his life. Let me be real to my men here. What we have done is that we have never, we refuse to stay on the ground. That's just what we have done. And when you hang around real men, that's what they talk about. And that's why you don't take your case to chickens. When you take your case to chickens, they will bury you and say, that's the end. That's the end. Real men are fighters. Courageous. In the place of battle. The man I brought here, I think you think he's not serious. The woman he has there had a challenge, health. Ten years they could not have sex. He remained his wife. So when I bring people, I know what I'm saying. Ten years. And when I went back almost ten years later, the wife is still the wife. What are you facing that you feel that nobody has faced? It's because nobody is telling you what they have faced. What have you done that nobody has done? What error? Real men keep moving. They are courageous. They quit. 
is what defines them. You look at David. What didn't David do? But you study Psalm 51. Samson was not a man. He just had muscles. And that's the problem. Some of you define man who bad. See, real men may not have muscle. All those things you are talking about, now lie. In my entire life, I have never gymed. I've never mistakenly. I registered for one gym. I didn't go there. Where is the time? I mean, I'm half hour, I'm half hour, I've lived Satan. I'll leave principalities and powers. Then I'll be in you know, my journey. <laughs> no, right here, rubbish here. One day, there was somebody, another. Me, I don't gym. There was somebody that gymed. We were somewhere many years ago. Somebody that, he, he gymed. <clears throat> All the pack were there. You know I me? Mean? It's one pack. The person, complete pack like this. And then we're together. The person, every day. <laughs> Courage is not in the muscles. Though. Hmm. Then, arm robbers showed up. <laughs> and when they showed up, they said, everybody here, lie down. And they took his spouse then. They took his spouse. And they opened their belt and they were taken. The man with the gym lay down. I stood up. You can't do that. Lie down. No. No. No gym. See, one pack. <laughs> It's courage. They take the guns on me. Cut. See. So when you're choosing a man, you're looking for somebody that has mind. Sometimes courage to take loan. If that's what's required. Courage to do whatever needs to be done to ensure the problems are solved. Because if you don't do that, lady, you will get to a point. Your husband. Your husband. Where are we going to buy the husband will not be there. He's talking. Life is hard. That's not a man. That's not a man. If I tell you things we have survived here. And they were still existing. You won't believe. I have survived everything. Scandal. Betrayer. What have you gone through? Everything. Judas. Every, what, but what is common about me is that no matter what you do against me, the next time you check me, I'll be father ahead. Father. Father. So, Courage. Courage. Choose men for their courage. Because you don't know what the future holds. It's not only for men, no. It will also take courageous men, women, to marry courageous men. Because whoever that man is, and men, men, if that woman had broken at the, that challenge, there will be another Mrs. That person now. What are you facing? Let me go into this. So, and I think my time is up. Number two, a real man is a covering. Isaiah 32, verse 2. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, a cover from a tempest, a river of water in a dry place, a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Oh my God, my time. A real man is what? A covering. Now, how do you know a real man? You will notice that when you take cover under him, you will not feel the impact of the wind as much as you should. You will not feel the impact of the tempest as much as you, because he's the one taking it. He's the one taking it. He's taking the wind. He's taking the tempest. He's taking the dryness, but he doesn't let you know. Do you get my point? He's a covering. That's why whenever you are feeling the weight of life excessively as a woman, it's because that man is not in the position he's supposed to be. A real man is a covering. Is a cover. A cover is simply that. A cover. What is a cover? A cover. One of the things I said recently yesterday, I had a meeting, and I said I have concerns with some people in our church. No matter what you face in your family, they didn't say you should share your challenges with your friend. The practice sometimes 
A challenge shared with someone who is not a covering. Some of you share your challenge with baskets. Basket mouth. Sometimes you have shared the challenge with a friend and your, your case is everywhere. A covering is a covering. The tomorrow, who asked Ruth out? Who asked Boaz out? It was Ruth that asked Boaz out. But nobody knew. He prosecuted the agenda, laid claim to is a covering. You don't feel the impact of life. You don't, are you getting what I'm saying? He covers the covering. But that, that, that now means that the impact of life is on him. The wind is on him. The tempest is on him. The dryness comes to him. Are you there? But because it's the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, whoever takes cover in them are okay. They cover. They cover. If you have a real man, for instance, now, no matter what you have not done, no mortal can harass you. For instance, if you marry a real man, if you don't have children for 20 years, nobody can harass you for not having children. Because that man will stand as an indefatigable pillar between you and anybody. He is not going to say you should go and confront them. When they try to harass you, say, hey! Is he my wife or your wife? It's a cover. It's a cover. He doesn't touch it. He confronts the issue. At all. He faces it. faces it. Many of you are feeling too many things because there's no man. There's no man. You are feeling it direct, direct. And particularly as a woman, God did not design women to feel the impact of life directly. He defined, designed men to carry it. So when a woman is feeling life too much, because a man is not what he's doing, doing what he's doing. Not doing what he's doing. A real man is a cover. Part of that, handling issues. Four or three, a real man walks. I can't explain much anymore. A real man walks. A real man walks. In Ruth chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 2. When Naomi, let me explain this. A real man is not known for partying. See, suspect anybody that knows how to enjoy life more than they know how to walk in life. Suspect them. Ruth said about Boaz, Ah, Naomi. And said, my daughter, will I not look for rest for you? Because when you find a real man, you can rest. That it may be well for you. And now is not Boaz acquainted with whose maidens you were? Where? Behold, is we know him badly Tonight, in the threshing floor. What that means, a real man, the location is his work. It's his work. It's there. It's not fun. It's not play. It's work. Many of you ladies, I know you like to play, and you like men that play, but I'm telling you, if you settle for a player, you will pay. If what is, is the organizing principle of the man's life is pleasure, <laughs> you, will pay. you will pay. I'm not saying you don't have fun in life, but life is not about fun. You were not created in life to have fun. You were created for work. You are his workmanship recreated in Christ. Unto good works. You're not, not unto good fun. You are recreated. You are his workmanship. This is you are his workmanship recreated unto good works, not good fun. And in reality, it is as you walk that you have the authorities for fun. Which kind of fun are you having? Which kind of fun? And you walk as you walk. You can play like you play. Yeah. So a man, she Ruth knew that this kind of man, let us plan this thing. He will be at work. He will be at work. And she dressed up, padded up herself, and went there and met him there at work. Passing the night at work. So that the woman can enjoy her life. And not using work as an excuse to go and be sleeping around. Because there are other men like that. They say, I'm walking. Now lie. You are walking something else. Your work is an excuse. You are just deceiving yourself. Your work is an excuse. I mean real work. <laughs> the real man walks. Let me press on. He walks. I don't have time to walk. Walk. 
walk. Many years ago, I had a woman that was around me, said to my wife, said, I don't like, uh, I don't like the Jew. I don't like him. He's too busy. My wife said, I think he's hardworking. That perspective is different. You see? A woman that thinks you are hardworking and that you are too busy, different. I like my wife. When my children complain today about anything, she tells them, the reason why daddy can provide anything for us is work. I tell my daughters, I have two. I'm already corrupting their mind to settle for a hard worker. A hard worker and a smart worker. Men work. Women can play, but not men. Men can't afford to play. So when you see a man playing, he's a woman. A woman. A man sits down and is watching a movie from morning to night. Man, shame on you. You should be making movies from morning to night. What those that watch movies from morning to night and those that make movies, don't, they're not the same thing. Which camp do you want to belong to? The watching camp or the making camp? Worker. And when you choose a worker, you also must have the discipline for it. You understand? Women. Mm -hmm. Just be enjoying the toys. My wife now, when you walk, make sure you ensure there are enough toys. Abby? Yeah. Some time ago, I said, what can I do for this woman? I was so happy for her, so happy, so happy about her. I said, I will go and get one phone. One of our phones, like, is it 1.1 million? A phone. I shouldn't tell them, Abby. So I went to her in the toilet. I said, babe, that phone you like and all that. She said, I said, I didn't tell her the price, so. Because if she hears the price, but anytime she does the phone now, I look at her as I'm a good husband. A good husband. That's it. Each time you see her doing like this, it's 1.1 million she's pressing. Yeah. If you're a thief and you don't work, I'm not, it's not wrong to enjoy life about work. Where's the thing about men again? <laughs> Walk. A real man is a covering. A real man walks. Number four, a real man prays. Matt, look at him one. He spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not to lose hearts. I will that men lift up holy hands everywhere. Men pray. Real men pray. If you don't pray, they will collect things from your hand. Real men pray. Real men pray. One week ago, you didn't know this, I broke down. I was not able to maintain my normal prayer schedule like I should. See, in that one week, all hell broke loose. Am I right? Or you're this. Because, let me tell you the truth, because when I am up, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I lift up Baba Ditomua. In fact, many times, so that I still pray for your mother that is dead. Father, I lift up Baba Mama, they told me what? The week I couldn't pray for him, they told me the hand. My own father ended up in the hospital. Real, real men pray. Just because I couldn't abdicate it. I now told somebody close to me, I said, ah, 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 I can't afford to be sick. Oh. Even now, I'm not okay. Oh. It is native I'm wearing. You understand? It's because I don't want to stress my life with tie. Right? But I had to jump back again by the next week by force. Bah! Because if you don't pray, Satan will take over. Take over families. Luck will take over. Poverty will take over. Challenge will take over. Your enemies, your helpers will stop helping. Your customers will stop coming. If you don't pray, Nobody likes you. It is the aroma of heaven on you that they respond to. Make you dead there. All these business people, you think our business is about, you are the only one selling, are you the only one selling it? So, you, you are the only one selling it? Real men pray. They cost the devil. They cost principalities and power. They are like a pillar between whatever you are selling. They pray. Their families don't even know. Their, their families are busy sleeping. They are carried away. Male toma ateko over them. 
It's when they are no more that they will feel the impact. As the pastor of Israel, it's when I'm no more that you will know that there's life. It's when I'm gone. Then you will know that the hand was upholding you. Real men pray. Number four. All this time. Some of you know real men by, by walking step, by charts. That's no manhood. That's not what makes men. You don't know real men by their perfume. Come on, sis. But there are a lot of men here I see. Weak. Weak. Come on, man. Even to be talking, mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Timba, yeah. lady. Some of them, as they are listening to them, go, you, you know why your mouth is smelling? I, when you come to me in the morning and your mouth is smelling around nine, you didn't pray. Anybody that prays, heaven will take away the smelling mouth. Scrap, do, roba. You will not smell. You know somebody, a man showing up in your presence. Eight, nine in the morning. And when she go back, nothing. Go back, nothing. He chatted all night. Did phone sex all night. Nothing. It's empty of barren of oil. Nothing there. It's not pushing life. When life, when this. Real men pray. Four, five. Real men provide. First Timothy five, verse eight. They provide. But I don't have. It is what they have that they provide. Any man doesn't provide. You don't even see the similitude of provision. Run. He that does not provide for his own. And especially, Toba, you see, I'm taking your time again. Forgive me. Because I don't know how to leave this thing now. God will help me. Real men provide. What do they provide? They provide what they have. Real men have provisional capacity. See, when I had nothing, eh? I used to bring bonds back for my wife. Am I lying, babe? No. I buy bonds. That was my level. That was my level. But that you have a man that's not providing nothing. You are not the one providing for him. You will not suffer. They have a provisional instinct. Six. First Corinthians 14, 20. Real men understand. You see, he said, in children be malice, but in understanding be men. First Corinthians 14, 12. In, which means you know men by the quality of their understanding. When they talk, you know this one has understanding. Understanding. I have older men around me. When they talk, Understanding oozes out of them. Real men have understanding. They take strange action. They, they function from a place of understanding. So, real men are not known for malice. Only babies are known for malice. So, okay, your wife is not talking to you. So, you too, you are not talking to her. You are a baby. You are now using laptop, pressing laptop as a substitute for your wife. You are a baby. So, if your wife is not talking to you, if my wife is not talking to me, I will talk to her. Whenever my wife is angry with me, it shows from her. You know, she has this thing here. When she's angry, that thing comes down like this. <laughs> no matter what is done, I will talk to her until the thing goes back up. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Yeah. Maybe. If we fight yesterday, I will eat our food tomorrow morning. <laughs> I will eat it. I said, baby, see you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a man. Can't be known for malice. Now I see men here keeping malice. There are even men here that are not talking to people in church. Yeah, babe. You. So no, me, I'm, I'm in this church. I'm not talking to this person. You, as a man, there are people you're not talking to. The men are not like that. We talk to everybody. Including the person who wants to kill. We still talk to the person. Real men are known by understanding. Understanding. They open their mouth, you sense that understanding. I ask my wife, this is my wife now. As much as she made me, I also made her. Ask her some conversations we had. I had to upgrade her understanding to be able to marry her. Abia Delay. 
And that's why I think that your man should have more understanding than you. Or you have to drag him all the days of your life. And it is, men are not easy to drag. So better find someone whose understanding is ahead so that you'll be the one dragging you, not you dragging him. Seven, and my time is up. Mr. Toba, you will forgive me. This one, see, Toba, I must talk this one. <laughs> A real man, you know. Why am I calling Toba? He called me, says, sir, if you can keep it, I'm trying. I'm trying. When you do, you become a senior pastor, you understand. <laughs> you understand. You know, as a senior pastor, there's no substitute for you. You're, you better the people. Your breast is full. You understand? It's like a mother who begs children. The mother's breast is full of milk for them. That's the truth. And if he does not even push it out, mommy, it go the. You know what I'm talking about? You, mothers, you know what I'm talking about? You almost laugh. Like, drink this thing, you no? Know? You will now be forced into express so that I will not express what I want to say into water bottle. Listen, open your mouth. <laughs> I will balance it. I will find time. But this is my last point. Last point. Now, as I make this last point, I want every man here to stand up. Ah, ladies, thank you for bringing them. Thank you for bringing them. You should, let me, ladies, for you to enjoy your man, you should systematically entice him to places where he will hear word. If you don't, if you don't, have, you have to be systematic about it. Though. Where we hear word? If your man hear word, it go day easier for you. So you entice him, you entice him. So the way my wife was enticing me yesterday, you entice, you entice him, so that I can talk. Should I tell him about it? That was enticing me yesterday on my way to the office. <laughs> Babe, you can't throw me anywhere. I'm your husband. I'm not going. <laughs> she wanted to stone me. There's nothing you can do. We are married for life. She was enticing me. As I was going to the office yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Last point. My wife doesn't want me to share with you. Okay, baby, I won't tell them. But she was enticing me. <laughs> Just imagine what she was saying. Lastly, every man. Oh, yeah. Straighten your shoulder. Straighten your shoulder like this. Be looking at me, straighten it, straighten it like men. In the overflow, overflow, stand up, everybody there. In all the overflow, stand up. All the men there, stand up. I'm coming to you. And be listening to me. All the men in the reception. Lastly, a real man does not surrender his strength to women. Shh, shh. Just listen. Particularly warish women. A real man does not surrender. I don't like it. Let me put it this way. A real man does not surrender his strength to bitches. You see? We should change that translation of the Bible. From warish woman to bitches. A real man does not surrender his strength to bitches. Proverbs 6, verse 26 to verse 29. For by means of a bitch, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. He says, listen, man, listen, man. If you surrender your strength to the ministry of bitches, you will be reduced not to a loaf of bread, but a Peace. You are not a slice, a piece. You see, men, look at me. When bitches are true with you, all that is left in your life will be a piece of bread. Now, you know how a piece of bread is? You tear. You tear. You got, they will suck your strength. Let me share some things with you. Women sap strength. This woman you are looking at. Now, let me tell you about legitimate. Legitimately. Any message you see that I preached that you didn't like, maybe I made love to my wife yesterday. 
I have tested this. That when I make love, to, that's legitimate, legal relationship sanctioned by God. I make love. Even while I'm trying to deliver the word, Shelo Yama, come. I will not be able to do that. Some time ago, my wife felt I needed something and all that. She felt I needed something. I was going to preach the next day. She just came out of the bathroom and said, Sharado. <laughs> Listen to me. I said, Do you want to go? I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm trying to explain. Listen to me. Listen. I'm, I'm trying to explain where the strength of your impact went last year. It went to the warish women you permitted in your space. I begged, I said, when I finished the delivery, that is a legitimate relationship sanctioned by God. Engaging with her sexually affects my strength spiritually. Talk less of an illegitimate relationship. And yet, you can come to the place of birth. If there's a deficiency of strength, you can bring out. What you want to push out will die in you. In the absence of strength, you can have vision. You can have dreams. You can have an assignment. You can have anything. But that thing, that vision can die in you because you gave your strength to women. There are many of you. That's where your strength, men, men. That's where your strength for results, generation. An impact went last year. A little phone sent here. A little this one here. A little baby. Now you are there. No strength. No weight. No power. Nothing. You speak words. They come. You make declarations. No. You are just there. A bread. A shadow of what you... You know you are big. You know you are strong. You know you carry something for a generation. I tell you the truth, all men love bitches, including your pastor. <laughs> that must be a first timer. <laughs> no, I tell you the truth. But for the sake of the strength that we want to precipitate, and for the sake of the vision and the dreams that we want to push out, we curtail ourselves. Tell ourselves. We control ourselves. From bitches. In Proverbs 31 verse 2, my last scripture. You have this one taking it. Jemisi is taking our own. Sinuka is taking our own. Eh? Banker is taking our own. Eh? Nina is taking her own. Help me. Mention the name of your own. <laughs> so now, here are you. As you are standing there, there are 17 bitches tied to your apron alone. Sapping out strength. That's why you're on the same level. This is not about your wife knowing. It's about precipitating the strength needed to go to your next level. How high you want to go determines the strength you need to generate. If you're a plane, you need to run. If you're a rocket, to, 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 if you, it's how far. Where planes get to, rockets can't get there. Where rockets get to, planes can't get there. And then some of you, your wife is telling you, your wife telling you, let me ask you as men, are you where you are supposed to be in destiny? This is not about your wife. This is about you and what you saw yesterday. Now you are 30. Now you are 31. Now you are 32. Now you are 33, 34, 35. Now you are 30. Now you have you have not seen what you saw. And you are still surrendering your strength. So the mother of Lemuel said, Man, this. what my son? That is the mother was, it wasn't a man saying this. It was a woman who knew that women have power. Women have power. See, when a woman is true with you, even all these are saying, eh, I have this, I this. No, you don't have anything. No. 
when your wife wants to humble you, you will beg her. So it was the mother saying, what, my son? What? Son of my womb. What? The what was thrice. Look at the next verse. Don't give your strength to women. Two. Don't give your ways to that which destroys kings. He's talking here. When you're a man, there are many things you can afford that you avoid. Many things. So God, as I was praying this, I should tell you, man, mark them and unplug them from your spirit. Unplug them. Take the, the some of you now, mm -hmm. you are like new in Matrix. New. Babe, I've connected all manner of pipes from which they are collecting strength from you. You are like new. One is connected to your bum bum. One is connected to that your thing in front. One is connected to your head. You are totally confused. When they are through with you, you can't even precipitate dreams, visions. You don't even know what you are going to do. You just, you finish like this, you now you be sleeping like a fish. You wake up, you can't even wake up. Again. Uh, uh, your strength is gone. The mother said, what, 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 three times. Don't surrender your strength to that which destroys kings. I'm saying one alone. Husbands will tell you one alone is work. You now have two, three, four. You see, you're having fun. You are not having fun. You are developing voids. Voids. No, so that I can accumulate enough, generate enough to take off. I'm saying this because some people are taking off. So, lastly, real men, don't surrender. Leave, see, it's not your, your wife is not your problem. It's your life I'm talking to now. Don't surrender their strength to women. They don't. I'm not going to do police. Your wife is not going to police you. Wives, don't check their phone. Don't stress them. If they want to be non-entities, let them be non-entities. You just be making progress. You, women, you can't go and bother your head about one serious man. No? If you die out of worry, he will remarry. Face your life. You know you are married to the devil. Tell him to use condom. If he doesn't want to use condom, tell him you are not doing it. You know, don't stress him. When he becomes nothing, when his mates have left him behind, after 10 years, he will know that he was drinking from Jezebel. Real men don't submit themselves to women. Good morning. So what you want to do is to unplug all those dirty pipes. Plug it. And precipitate strength. It's not about anybody. It's just about you. And then lastly, God says, I should pray for the gift of men. Stretch your right hand here. Father, pray for everybody here. When you let captivity captive, you give gifts to men. Doctor, I'll suspend this class because of the time I've taken. I'll suspend this year's, this month's class. I'll suspend it. Father, you said when you let captivity, you give gifts to men. One translation said you give men as gifts. I pray for everybody who came out of church for this first service. Today, give them men. Honor them with the gift of men. Amen. You know, if you have men, you won't know shame. 
Mama, they will stand by you. Forgive my robber. They will stand by you. Ladies, you know that if you have ever tasted a real man, you have ever experienced a real man, one man, real man, is enough for a lifetime. You know that there's nothing facing you that that person will not quench if it comes to him. I pray for every woman here, every genuine son and daughter of this house, particularly my daughters, God will honor you with the gift of men. I pray for all the singles here. Ah, God will give you the gift of men. Real ones. Strong ones. Fighters. I want to say to my sons here, I'm no more perfect than you, but I'm a fighter. A fighter. A fighter. Real men fight. They fight for their families. They fight for their call. They fight for their vision. They fight. They fight till they, till they go to their grave. And they hand over a legacy. I pray for all the men here in the name of the Lord Jesus. The anointing of a fighter. Let it rest upon you now. Every man here, lay your hands on your chest. Let the spirit of manhood enter you now. From today, what used to make you buck, what used to make you chicken out, what used to make you submit, give up. When you go back to confront them, those things will bow. Many of you here, the grace to keep at it until it breaks through. That grace comes upon you now. I pray for my husbands here. Not once will your wife need to encourage you. Amen. As men, the grace to be fine. Amen. To be a solution provider. Amen. To be a covering. Amen. To be a shadow of a great rock. Amen. That grace rests upon you now. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Did you get something this morning? Yes, sir. 